Celtic Dragons this year, I start on the field, and my purpose there is to kind of help set the mood. We have some samples playing, it's like almost envisioning like a fog whirling over the field, and the color guard builds this egg that starts pulsing, and I crack it when the third announcement is made, and you start to see all of this motion, all of this egg that has brought all these little baby dragons in the color guard out. In the beginning, it's to set more of that ethereal, mysterious tone to know that these mythical creatures are here and they are coming. And then at the end is when I show up again. Uh, it's the same motif, it's the same melody, but, uh, variations on, but instead of it being that more, uh, that more slightly dark tone, the ending is almost bittersweet and melancholy because through this point of the show we have met the dragon, we've seen it grow up, we've seen it take flight, we've seen it breathe fire, but at the very end of it, it's we're saying goodbye. And so my gestures now reach more towards the shaping of the core, where the props have moved, and then the very, very end is looking back at the head of the dragon and that kind of the bittersweet goodbye. In 16, I was a baritone. In 16, 17, and 18, I'm a vocalist in some capacity. In 17 and 18, I'm also a drum major. So 16 was probably my favorite year for the combo. Baritone and singing, because I was scooting around the field the entire time. Singing and being a drum major is a little bit of an interesting experience because it's, it's kind of a dichotomy. A drum major in at least some capacity is the visual metronome. Um, whereas I don't even start on the main podium anymore. I start on the field and I am the, the druid, so to speak, that cracks the egg, that discovers the egg and cracks it open. Um, so I go from this very flowy, very mysterious, ethereal character to back to time. 